always a delight to talk to the great Olin Krutz. And he joins us on the score hotline powered by IBEW Local 9, Chicago's original powerhouse since 1892. Olin, good morning. Hope you had a great Christmas. Good morning, guys. I did. I hope you guys did, too. Yeah, we got uh, we got uh, like an, an embarrassing amount of gifts and all sorts of money. <laughs> it's weird. Me too. Me too. <laughs> so help us out, Olin. You went back and looked at this game again, mm-hmm. and you know, again, we we talked about the pluses and minuses, the flaws, and the and the and the fact that they did win a game. What was your takeaway? Ultimately, what was your takeaway from that game? I came away thinking that the Chicago Bears from last year are a better football team. Uh, you know, they're about middle of the pack, but a team like the Cardinals, uh, you know, they're, they're going to beat a team like the Cardinals, even though uh, you're not happy with the second half, but they come away with the win. Uh, they doubled their win total from last yeah. year. I know you guys heard you guys talking about it's about where you had them, right? They're kind of exactly where you thought they would be. And my takeaway when I watch it, of course, is that that defense it's fun to watch, right? Billings and Montez Sweat and Demarcus Walker and Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards and that secondary, guys. We talked about on this show for a while now. They look like they're, they, they could be elite. They're getting close to that, right? Like uh, the quarterbacks, you can see them. They don't know when to get the ball out. The secondary is just sitting on every throw. Uh, they're a fun group to watch, physical, fast. Remind you kind of of Lovey's groups. Uh, obviously, it's the same system, same scheme. Uh, they're getting a lot better at it in the offensive side. Uh, it was fun to watch the offensive line completely dominate a front, right? Get after a front, get 250 yards rushing. Good to see Khalil Herbert uh, running again, uh, being the back that we all wanted him to be going into this year, taking the ball to the edge, uh, threatening the cornerbacks, making the secondary guys tackle. Coco Met looked good since he was in. And, and obviously there's, there's a question. I thought Justin Fields played about the way he thought Justin Fields would play against the Cardinals. Didn't change very many people's opinion, whether you're leaning one way or the other. So, Olin, when you look at Darnell Wright, from your point of view, given your experience, what kind of rookie season has he had? Yeah, he's really the, the number nine pick of the draft, guys, to be honest with, with you guys. He's got some ups and downs. He's a rookie, right? But his potential, his talent, and, and that when you watch him play and the way he's anchored that line, remember, uh, he played with that bad shoulder for a while. He hasn't missed a game. Uh, the, the right guard position has been in flux. The center position has been in flux. The left guard position has been in flux. The left tackle position has been in flux. So you've had one guy anchoring that side of the line. Uh, I got to tip my hat to that, to the fact that he's been there every week, week in and week out, playing to, to, next to whoever is next to him. And, and, you know, sometimes his level is up and down, but that's what you expect a rookie right tackle to look, to look like. Now, next year, we need him to take that next step, obviously. But right now, watch him compete against the top defensive ends in the league. He matches up physically, which you would expect from a guy who drafted, you know, top 10 in the NFL draft. Now, just take the next step, clean up the penalties, clean up some of your technique. He does like to drop his head sometimes. I seen him one time, I was laughing watching the film. Uh, he took three kicks and then basically headbutt the DN with no hands. So uh, it, he's a fun guy to watch. He gets his pad level really low on run blocks. If they get that line next to him set, and you would, you would expect guys, like they did with the defense, they're going to pour some money into that offense this offseason, put some high-level guys around him. I expect his game to jump. This segment with Olin Cruz is sponsored by Plumbers 911. Plumbing emergency call. The plumbing professionals available 24 7 at 1 833 Plum 911. And Olin, it was really interesting. So, what is this? The 32nd game of, of the Eberflus era. And he comes out uh, on Tuesday and he basically says that, uh, you know, I, I guess he saw the, the Eagles uh, play. I don't know. But he says, hey, you know, we, we have to do a better job in short yardage situations. You need to have something like that, meaning the Eagles, uh, you know, the, the brotherly shove. Um, and he says, you know, well, you can always do it. Like, it occurred to him that they need, like, a singular short yardage play after whatever, 32 games. Hey, you know what? We ought to do that. I, I thought it was a little bit too late. But I appreciate that it's now finally obvious that let's not get so cute. Let's not try to fool anybody. Let's try to get at somebody. Yeah, and, and it's interesting to go back. You can always look at the play and say, okay, 
I didn't like the Wildcats. I don't like the single wing shift, shifting the quarterback out of quarterback, moving the running back over, having uh, Justin Fields run to the flat. I just don't think you need all that, especially against this Cardinals front, right? But to the other point of it is, when I turned the film on, last week he talked about details, right? We have to coach the details in critical situations. You would say third and one at that point in the game. I think they're down a score. The Cardinals where you got to get that third and one to run the clock. Details on that play. Guys, they actually had an extra blocker. Braxton Jones had nobody blocked. Obviously, Robert Tunyon, if you think about it, right, that was probably Cole Komet in practice. So he probably got no reps. They're coming across and going one-on-one with that linebacker inside the box there. But the, the Cardinals had a five-man front, and I think that was a, a, a cornerback guy or a, a guy in the secondary who came down to play linebacker. I don't know if Lucas Patrick thought Roshan Johnson was supposed to what they call press the hole. By that, I mean get to the heels of the offensive lineman before you make your cut. But either Lucas Patrick went too far and didn't know the Amy point in the back, or Roshan Johnson cut it back too early. But when I look at that play, guys, sometimes players have to execute. Sometimes the coach actually makes a good call. And you have a light box, and you're going against the Cardinals. Now, you guys find me a guy on the Cardinals on that front seven who made a play that day mm-hmm. who's going to be in the NFL starting next year. I can't find you one. So the players on the Bears offense has to take a little responsibility, in my opinion, on that play. Because even though I don't like the cuteness of shifting guys out, sometimes Getsy does design something for you to give you every advantage, and you just didn't execute your job. But, but to back to your bigger point of we should have a play, that was my argument when they were going to move Tevin Jenkins to left guard, if you guys remember. I thought you should leave an elite side of the line in case in critical situations you needed one yard. Now, I know Tevin Jenkins is out now, but you guys see what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, I'm sure yeah. they have a play, but where do you go? Where do you go because your line is brand new? What is your play? Is it outside zone? Is it power? Is it inside zone? Is it quarterback sneak? You're right, Molly, and so is Coach Flues. They do not have a play, and you're also right. They should have they should have thought about that while they're having short yardage problems in the middle of the season. <laughs> this segment of the Hunt Crutes is sponsored by Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868. So everybody wants to know what you think about Justin Fields and what you think mm-hmm. he can do in the final two games, if anything, to change the minds. Olin, I think we heard yesterday from Matt Eberflus a, a lackluster endorsement of him as a starting quarterback next year comparing him to everybody else. He's not everybody else. Where are you with the quarterback and what do you expect? Yeah, it's, it's really a great point that you make there because I'll tell you this, and if you're a fan, you have to listen to this. If they ask him about Montez Sweat, is Montez Sweat your starting defensive end next year? What do you think he would say? He would laugh and look at you like you're crazy, right? That's right. a crazy question to ask. Of course he is. Have you seen him play? He's telling you all you need to know. What can he do in the last two games? They said Atlanta defense is pretty good. I don't know, David. I don't know what he can do. I think he's basically on film what he is, especially with Luke Getzey as a play caller. That's why we've argued maybe we have Janoko call plays. Maybe have somebody else call plays there. I think where he is, where Justin Fields is, guys, right now at this point, I think where Luke Getzey is right now at this point, their argument's going to be when they walk in that room, hey, why don't you give me a $20 million T.J. Edwards at running back, right? Why don't you give me a Yannick Ngakwe? Why don't you give me a Montez Sweat? Why don't you give me a Tremaine Edmonds? Why don't you give me three second-round picks? See how I can perform out there, right? Because I heard Molly say coming in to this segment, look, they, they, they lost Cole Komet and D.J. Moore, who you guys would – I love D.J. Moore, great football player. You wouldn't say he's Tyreek Hill, right? You yeah. wouldn't say he's Kelsey. Right, they, like he lost those two guys and he had nobody else on offense. Right, they they're trying mm-hmm. to throw Tyler Scott, uh, uh, the curious case of Darnell Mooney, whatever happened there. And then we went through. I, I went through their offensive line for you. Khalil Herbert just came back. I'm sure they would want. They gave Demarcus Mark Walker 20 million. They gave T.J. Edwards, Tremaine Evans. I'm sure they'd want a 20, 30 million dollar scat back. Right, go out there look, uh, look at the look at the cost of these guys. They didn't get them anybody and give them a running back. They don't have a ton of weapons out there. To me, uh, that's your argument left if you're Justin Fields, if you're Luke Getzey. That's your argument. Look look what happened to the defense when they filled it with talent. All of a sudden, uh, they brought Montez Sweat in, and everybody became great, and and Coach Eberflus became a genius. (laughs) So so help us out. The Bears, I I mean, David doesn't want to hear this, but the Bears Mm -hmm. still are a 1% chance of making the playoffs. So I think you – are obviously going to 
field your best team and try to win. Uh, mm-hmm. And I believe Atlanta is a 1% chance. So the winner of this game, the Bears would probably be eliminated with a victory. Nonetheless, there is a chip in a chair. You're at the big game and you have a single chip and you're trying to play it out. But mm-hmm. if you lose, if you win, whatever happens, if you're eliminated, what do you do going into Green Bay? You know, the hated Packers. Do you sit the quarterback because you want to preserve him? And I know you want to win every game you ever played and you played every game you could. But mm-hmm. if you get to that point and you got, you're, you're looking at Justin Fields and you're thinking he's not the guy next year, we're going to use the draft pick and they should know by then that they have the draft pick. Do you, do you roll him out against Green Bay? It depends on where you are as an organization with your head football coach, right? And then how many people are going to be in that building when you get to that game? Because if you're moving on from your head coach and your quarterback and, and you need to trade them, then then you go with logic, I would guess, right? And it's a question between logic and culture, right? So you go with winning a game, building your culture, but uh, uh, I'm a big guy in culture. You guys know I'm a former player teaching people how to win, uh, getting everything, the franchise, moving in the right direction, right? That's the side of building I come from, right? I come from that side of building. The guys upstairs, Come from the logic side. We got to do what's best for the Chicago Bears, and we got to get the pick and save Justin Fields, keep him healthy. You understand both arguments, right? I think that just comes down to uh, does the culture of Eberflus matter if he's not going to be here, right? Does the culture of them winning football games matter if you're clearing the whole building out, or does getting myself another draft pick, uh, uh, preserving the quarterback that I'm go- maybe going to trade in the offseason, does that matter more? These are the things you got to go in the Hallis Hall put up on a grease board and have the decision makers decide for you because uh, I, I keep bringing this up because it rings in my ear. Every time you guys ask me questions yes. like this, yes. when they fired the coach, they, what did they say? When they fired the two coaches, Ryan Post stood up there and said, what? I make the hard decisions. And I thought I'm going to hold you to that no matter if it's football or it's something else. And you credit them, right? You applaud them for what they did with those two coaches, uh, well, whatever was going on, right? You applaud them for setting that standard in the building. Now, damn it, set that standard on the other side of the building, right? Set that standard on your football side. Required at that level is kept, required that the standard is there, and we make the hard decisions. We take all the feelings out, and we make everybody uncomfortable by making hard decisions. Because, guys, with everything, all the losing they've been doing, everything going on, when it comes to football, when it comes to benching people, when it comes to doing things that are hard decisions, I have not seen one in a while. And if they make the hard decision to sit Justin Fields in the finale against the Packers because they want to preserve his trade value, it will make you wonder if they've already made up their mind about the head coach because if you want to preserve the culture, you're not likely to do something that runs contrary to what he wants. It would be a big hint as to what would be. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, right? Very interesting to watch. And here we are again, right? Where there's John Fox and and his quarterback and and Nagy and his quarterback. And then now we're back here again with Iberflus and his quarterback. So – um, you know, the Bears, hopefully we get this right. We, we know that there, there's, there's whispers out there, right? There's uh, uh, C.J. Stroud down there in Houston. There's already whispers about Ryan Pohl. We watched Roquan Smith uh, play in Baltimore, right? Oh, these are the right decisions. Uh, uh, we're coming into a year now where, when we, we, you know, we say the Chicago Bears are getting better, right? But they're better than the team that you decimated, right? Of course they are. But are they better than Matt, um, uh, Nagy's, uh, you know, second to last year when they went to the playoffs? Are they better than that when I look at their roster? I don't know, right? I don't know if they're better than that. Of course they're better than when you traded Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith, and Robert Quinn. Of course you guys are better than that. And the team is moving younger and more talent. But now this next year coming up, really big year, really big decisions in that building. Uh, uh, Kevin Warren better get out his watering bottle and start watering all over that building. Got to have things go. <laughs> I gotta don't forget the sunshine. Go. Don't forget the sunshine. sunshine. You got to have sunshine, too. You got a good fertilizer, right? Uh, get that fertilizer. There's plenty of that. Smell. I think we got a lot you got to get it going. There's plenty of fertilizer, Owen. Always is. Plenty of fertilizer in that building. I agree with you guys. We'll take that with a grain of salt. All right. Owen, you're the best. Thanks, Thank Owen. you, buddy. Thank you, guys. <laughs>